I'm France, and yeah, I live in France, so I have the French accent. So I would like to apologize about my French accent. I will do my best, but if you don't understand what I'm saying, just let me know. Okay? Uh, I speak only maybe one week or two weeks a year. In English, I arrived two days ago, so help me, huh? <laughs> help me. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a tasting of rosé, and I'm going to try to explain what the meaning and the philosophy of rosé at Nicolas Feuillat. Actually, we have, uh, Nicolas Feuillat is uh, in the big house. It's a house which has a wide range. We have 13, one street, different champagne. It's a lot of champagne. And we also have the wide range of champagne. We have three types of champagne. We have the regular champagne, regular, uh, three types of rosé, sorry. Three types of rosé. The regular rosé, uh, the two first glasses. The rosé uh, through aging wood, the middle of the glasses. And the palmoja rosé, it's by bleeding. Before starting, I'm going to explain the two ways to make a rosé. Um, just, and if you don't understand, stop me. To make a rosé, in Champagne, we are the only one, we were the only one, which has the right to make rosé by blending a white wine with a red wine. Okay? Never, nobody has the right in France at the moment, even in Europe, to blend a white and a red to make a rosé. We have the right. And now Spain has the right as well. Uh, the other things to make a rosé, it's like the Palme d'Or, it's by bleeding, like the blood. Okay? So you put the red grapes in the tongue or in a press device, and you bleed, like you rack the tongue, after you get the color. That's the Palme d'Or. I'm going to explain you the first by blending. Okay, what is the, the, the three first glasses is by blending. And actually, the rosé is very popular at the moment in, in France and in the world. During the 80s, if you, don't, if you remember, it was the Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc, it's only Chardonnay. I remind you, we have three types of grapes. Because on the show, you will see the pyramid. And I'm going to speak about the pyramid. Because in Champagne, we have three types of grapes. The Chardonnay. Chardonnay, it's a white grapes with white juice. The Pinot Noir, it's a white, it's a black grapes with white juice, very well known. And the Pinot Meunier, black grapes with white juice. So actually, two thirds of Champagne, it's black, but 100% of Champagne is white. It's magic, huh? It's not magic. Uh, so yeah, I speak about the pyramid. Because the pyramid, you have the Pinot Noir, brings a structure, the body. And it's a copyright. Now, don't, if you write that, it's a copyright of me. Okay, this is like the family. Pinot Noir, this is the body, the structure, the foundation, the muscles. This is the man. Okay? Chardonnay, this is the finest, the elegance. The acidity, vivacity, crispy, woman. Yes. <laughs> and when a woman meet a guy, they make kids, and this is a Pinot Meunier, roundness, fruitiness, something smooth. This is a Pinot Meunier, and it's exceptional because Pinot Meunier, the, the first varietal in Champagne is Pinot Noir, the second is Pinot Meunier, and the third is Chardonnay. But everybody speak about Chardonnay because it's an international varietal. And Pinot Meunier is very unique in Champagne. It's only in Champagne, some of them they make in New Zealand, some of them in Oregon, but a little bit. And in UK they try, because UK they try to make a bottle. They are so close from Champagne. But uh, this is a sparking from UK, it's not in Champagne. Champagne, it's only in Champagne. So, and I speak about the pyramid because what is the unique compared to the area, other area in the world in Champagne? The blending of the three varietals. The blending between the three varietals, so between the man, the woman, and the kids, 
and between the three, the many levels of year. Okay? The other, uh, the other area of the world, they always do uh, vintage. Because, like, you know, in Bordeaux, in Burgundy, in Alsace, they do a vintage every year. So some of the guys, my friends, they work all over France, they say, hey, baby. Now in Champagne, you make almost a, a year, almost a vintage every year. And I say, hey guys, in Bordeaux, you make vintage every year like three centuries. And they stop talking. <laughs> no, just to let you know, because of course now for the last 20 years, we are very lucky in Champagne. During the 90s, we made a vintage almost every year. And during the, from 2000, we could make a vintage almost every year, except 2001, and some of them did, and it's very good. So a vintage, that's the expression of a year. It's not regarding, of course it's regarding the quality, but at Nicolas Friat, we represent 7% of the total champagne, 7%. So it's a lot of villages, so I've got a lot of choice if I want to make a vintage. So, you know, sometimes some people say, oh yeah, you make a vintage, but it's not a very good year. Yeah, maybe it's not a very good year for the Chardonnay, maybe it's not a very good year for the Pinot Noir, but it could be a very good year for the Pinot, Noir, the Pinot Meunier and the Chardonnay in such area. So I choose what I want. It's very, it's an opposite regarding the Bordeaux and the Burgundy. I respect them, I love them. But when you have a little spot, like a square like this, and if there is a disease or trouble with the weather, in Champagne, it's not the same. If you have a trouble there, maybe it will be very good there. Okay?